<laughs> yeah, for the morning, for the morning. It's early morning for the showcase. <coughs> so <coughs> we will start with a difficult question, just as a warm up. Really, just as a warm up. Um, what's the capital of Slovakia? Hey, he was the first one. He was the first one. <laughs> nice so one. You want this one, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was going to give you options. Uh, Ljubljana <laughs> or Bratislava, <laughs> but you were you were quick. So this is what uh, Bratislava looks like. If you haven't been there, uh, please come. We are also doing a showcase festival in April called Sharp. Uh, this is what the Slovak mountains look like. If you want to come, uh, high Tatras. Uh, that's where the name comes from, Tatrati. Uh, from from the high Tatras. <laughs> Are you representing Slovakia? Uh, uh, well, you know, like just <laughs> we will get to the more serious <laughs> stuff. But uh, uh, <coughs> this is a guy from uh, Young Fathers. He was enjoying Edment, uh, a little dose from Tatrati. But yeah, let's get to the questions. So. Uh, what are the two biggest Slovak festivals? Uh, the biggest in terms of maybe international relevance? Uh, who would like to answer? Yeah. Maybe you can give the options. Are I don't have options. Okay, there are no options. <laughs> <laughs> I can try. Um, well, the first one is definitely Pohoda. Correct. And the second one hmm, might be Grave. Very correct. Right. Very right. correct. It's no, no. Do you have anything sweet? <laughs> sweet. Really? Yeah, Pohoda and Grape. So we've got uh, Monika Matiashovska from Pohoda Festival here. If you want to uh, get to meet her, you will have a chance afterwards. Uh, we don't have a representative from Grape no. here, uh, but we've got uh, good people from other festivals here. So we will get uh, get to it soon. Um, this is uh, what Pohoda and Grape uh, Festival look like. Have you been to? Has uh, except for the Slovaks who has been to Pohoda or Grape? Ah, okay. The Czechs. The Czechs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Always everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. Uh, so, do you know any more festivals in Slovakia? Anyone? Slum. Who said that? Ah, you're a good one. I'm not getting another one. <laughs> Slum is a good one. Uh, we've got uh, Marian, the, the head of booking uh, from the festival. So uh, uh, it's happening in Nitra, about 100 kilometers from Bratislava in uh, August, one week after Great. So it's like around 20, yeah. roughly. Uh, so any more guesses? Any more tries? Nobody wants Tatrati or <laughs> or, or Lentilki, Horalki. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. I can go on Sharp. <coughs> nice. Sharp. Yeah, that's uh, that's another. It's a good festival. Another, yes. <laughs> ah, okay. Next so year. here are some of them. Uh, Hviezdne Noci means like starry nights. Starry. Yeah, starry, starry. In Bicha in north of Slo Slovakia, a wonderful little festival uh, with uh, focusing on uh, new music, but also film and other, other arts happening in August. The other one is uh, Bratislava Jazz Days. If you are anyone keen on jazz, that is happening when? In two weeks. In two weeks? In two weeks. Okay. <laughs> so and it's been run as the longest festival in Slovakia for 30 years, I think. Mm -hmm. So it was the first festival back in even Czechoslovakia. Bratislava, jazz days, what else we do have here? Zvuk for Štjanica, because we have, uh, again, the head of booking for the festival, which is uh, another great event in central Slovakia, in Banska Štjanica, a historic town focusing on various uh, music genres. Elektra Guzi from uh, Austria was playing there this year. Uh, so uh, Alexandria Sashka is there if you want to talk to her. Uh, and, uh, but it's also uh, uh, classical music, uh, world music, really uh, a nice blend of genres. Uh, world Music Festival in Bratislava that was happening in September. 
Tatra flowers is, uh, is, is nothing related to Tatra season. Not yet. Uh, it's a festival in the, in the high Slovak mountains in uh, the first weekend of September. I will show you some pictures then later. And well, hey. yeah, that's the festival in April happening uh, in Bratislava. It's a showcase festival and conference. And here are some pictures. This is the, this one on the, on the left corner is in Bicha. The one on the right, top right, is in Banska Stjanica, Zufor Stjanica. This is the one in the mountains in, uh, called Tatra Flowers. This photo actually created quite a lot of backlash on social media. And uh, the last one is Sharp in Bratislava. So uh, can you name some Slovak artists? Eva, you are what now? <laughs> Longital. Longital, nice. Nice. What, what would you like? Oh, alcohol, that's me. <laughs> 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 sure. <laughs> 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 Any more? Katarzyna. Mm -hmm. Katarzyna. Nice. But you are from Slovakia. Yeah, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you only get a present anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? Maybe we can uh, make it easier by uh, asking about artists who play at Waves Vienna or were playing yesterday. Can, did you see anything yesterday or are you planning to? Six. Yes, yes. I will not even ask. <laughs> uh, so here's a list of uh, the artists who played yesterday. There was quite many of them, Alapastel Strun. Andra Buchko says Papillon. We've got two more coming up. Actually, now we, we are doing a reception in uh, 1245 yeah. in the book project room. And there will be Papillon playing uh, during <coughs> acoustic set. And we will have some food, really like uh, our homemade food. <laughs> our, some colleague, uh, our colleague cooked it. So uh, we will have some nice meals for you. And uh, Balp is playing uh, on Saturday, uh, 18. Actually, I have a yeah, 1845 at these the next stage, and Issa Mazing will close the festival. Really great artist uh, uh, with the like approaches to de deconstructed uh, electronic music and various uh, genres of, of dance and electronic music. And finally, some figures. Like we will end the presentation now, and we will go to the to the discussion. Uh, last year, according to the reports. The revenues from the recording industry were 11.2 million euro. What is maybe more interesting is that we have uh, currently the estimated number of 75,000 paying streaming subscribers, which I don't know if it's a big number or not. But we we were speaking about it yesterday. It's actually, it's not that bad as we as we expected. So uh, that's it, I think. If you want to ask some questions now please do so oh maybe la one last thing mm -hmm. with uh, with Lala Slovak Music Export we are trying to compile various info what we were saying now today what sort of festivals artists labels uh, venues uh, we are putting this all together on the website called musicexport.sk so if you are interested to know more you can uh, and browse and and find some info there. So that's it. We can flip to the mm -hmm. to the original slide and we can continue. Yeah, thank you guys for a uh, warm up quiz and <laughs> a nice show and <coughs> also presentation. We can start. Uh, we were assuming that uh, here are some bands or promoters uh, bands uh, who wants to. Who who are playing at Base Vienna and they are interested in playing in Slovakia. So we have the two experts, two booking experts on my left hand side and the right hand side. And I would like to ask, uh, I'm a foreign band and I want to play in Slovakia. What should I do? What's your advice for a band who wants to play in Slovakia? Like play this. Hello, good morning. So I think uh, the best would be to, um, from my point of view, the best uh, to play is a festival, like Boda or Sharp Festival, 
where there you, you get there many people to see you, even if you are an unknown act. And then it's easier to come back to Slovakia and play a club show, like a headline show in a small club. But if you don't get to the lineup of the festivals, which is not that easy uh, to get to, then you can you can you can try uh, to find some good venues, good promoters. Um, it's it's really easy to find. You can <laughs> yeah, you can ask me, but uh, yeah, I can give you some advice who to contact. But yeah, you need to find good promoters because there are many many venues uh, in Bratislava. Uh, not uh, in other cities as well, but you need to find out the, the right one for your genre, for your band. Or another option is also to find a band that is similar or has a similar taste that you do in Slovakia and then connect your gigs to their gigs and somehow to get known because it's really hard if you're an unknown band to get promoted and get people into the shows. So. Yeah, that's, that's also an option, but this option is, uh, uh, we are, I mean, each band uh, got a lot of requests from bands from abroad, like, can we play with you? And, you know, 90 percent is no, because we already have many gigs in, uh, in uh, Slovakia and we can't play just each month, so, but yeah, that's the option. If, if, if it fits, then that's also an Do option. you get these? Uh offers often from abroad uh, for your bands? E yes, yeah. I do. I thought, I thought it doesn't happen that often that the, the band from abroad asks a Slovak band to... Yeah, yeah that's cool. More often they are asking for festivals, yeah, right? Uh, how many requests of uh, bands do you have each year? I would say each day. <laughs> <laughs> we are that's speaking that's about Polna Festival. Know. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe 15 a day, just to my inbox, so, and there are other bookers at the festival, so I think in some, it's, I don't know, 60 a day. A day. Okay, 60 a day. Yeah. And what are the criteria of uh, selecting bands to Pohada the festival? I would say not the main headline spots, but uh, for the smaller bands. What are, what are the criteria for it? Um, the first is, we like good music. And we only present or book good music um, <laughs> according to our taste, of course, because the festival is privately owned by Michal Kaščak and, and his taste is then uh, shown at the festival. So that's the first thing, to be, to fit in the taste of the festival. So if you know, uh, if you're a band and would like to play at Pohoda, just check out what we had last year. And it's quite eclectic, the, the, the lineup but still it needs to fit somehow. And so the good music is the, the first and maybe only only thing that is important. And then you need to get recognized by us because if we really don't know about about you, about the band, then it's hard to book you. Now how to recognize the band? How are you uh, selecting the bands? From which sources? Mm -hmm. There are many sources. The best for us, for the new upcoming bands, are showcases. And we are visiting quite a lot of them. Uh, we are going to Ripperbahn, to Waves, to Mend, to Bush, to, I don't know. Eurosonic, maybe? Eurosonic, Eurosonic, Nouveau Prague. So many of, we, we have a big, big team, not a big team, but we are splitting the people and we are going and traveling to these showcases to find out the new talents. And if something is really, like yes, we want to have it. We book, uh, and it's possible to book it. We, we book the band, so that's the probably the easiest or the best option. Because with this 60 emails getting into our inbo inboxes each day, it's uh, most probable that we won't even open the mail and and see and and listen to the music because it's it's not possible somehow with all all the other workload that we have that it's it's not that easy. Yeah. And uh, I have a Tanya here who has experience uh, with, with booking not only Slovakian bands, but also the foreign bands. You are working these days with Homesick from the Netherlands, right? Yes. And you are booking for them the international gigs in foreign countries? Uh, for the Homesick, I'm working as an agent for Czech, uh, Czech Republic and Slovakia only. We, the Homesick uh, have a team of people. Eva is doing uh, Croatia, Slovenia, and all the Balkans. So <coughs> the Balkans. Then we have uh, the main booker who is doing 
all Europe and she talks with us like uh, these are the dates you have to book it like what's good what what's not good and uh, yeah so it's a team of people who is doing it yeah but do you have any experience with uh, booking slow events to abroad how can you describe your uh, how how to do it how to start what are the steps first step first step is that you need to have some network of contacts um, and I can only say from my experience how I how I did it uh, and I did it uh, I went on tour as a driver uh, of a UK band I was touring all around uh, Europe and uh, I was just a driver but then I talked to the that was the, uh, your really first step into this business right yeah, 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 yeah. because I, I started as a promoter in Bratislava so I organized this concert for this UK band and we became friends and the next year they went on tour again so I was interested to show in Bratislava, I did, but they, uh, on the last minute, they lost their driver, so they just <laughs> s wrote a status on their Facebook page, and I was like, yeah, why not, uh, I need to do the gig in Bratislava, and afterwards I can join them as a driver, so so I went on tour with them, and uh, I uh, was at many venues, and sometimes I didn't meet the promoter, but sometimes I did, so then I wrote them back, like, I have this friends from Slovakia, we would like to play at your venue, is it possible? So this, these were the first steps, and then uh, I needed to, of course, fill some gaps on the tour, so I checked uh, the bands who I booked in Bratislava, and I checked where they played, what venues, what, uh, who, who were the promoters, and I tried to write, write them, like, I'm this uh, Tana from Bratislava, I did the same shows as you did in your venue, or your uh, shows and I have this band maybe you are interested to help us with the show so slowly it, it took years and years but I'm still doing it like this and then of course I go to conferences and showcases and meet uh, some other people. Is it a hard work? It, yes it's uh, long hours behind the computer. <laughs> so sending emails searching for recommendations yeah. And also the personal contact on uh, at showcase yes. festivals and at concerts. Okay. But that's the best part of it, you know, because usually most of the time I would say ninety percent of the time we are behind the computer answering emails, not even getting in touch with a human being other than your colleagues. So then when you are at the showcases, it's really nice to get really into the music and into the people who are working in the venues. That's. That's for me on our team. Yeah, that's totally true. It's now a lot more enjoyable than it was just behind the computer. And when I started to go to first showcases, I meet first people. It was really great. And now it's easier and easier to meet another new people because uh, somebody will introduce you to somebody else. And, and that network is really important because even for us, if I get an email for somebody who I met already at the, at the showcase festival, it, I didn't even have to see the band. But if I met the person, I know okay, I will I will definitely open the email and and read it, so it will get the attention. So and personal also, recommendations. Yes, and also uh, if you have a person like Tanya who we trust already because we did something with them, or some agent that we trust, it's even easier because then you already trust that the band that they are recommending for the festival are good. In Tanya, you have a um, unique experience. Your band played at Icelandic Airways last year. Last year. Uh, it was uh, two years ago. Two years ago. Okay. We are talking about the deals. And, yeah. how, how can Slovak band can get to Icelandic Airways? Uh, it's again uh, what Monika already said. It happened uh, on a showcase festival called Waves Bratislava, once there was this festival and uh, the Eels played at Waves Bratislava and uh, the director and the booker of Iceland Airways was there. So I wrote him uh, an email a couple of days before Waves and so we met and he asked uh, for my recommendations, like what are the bands he should see. He asked mainly about Slovak bands because it was in Bratislava, so he was interested in many Slovak bands. And he saw the eels and he was like, yeah, I can imagine them playing Iceland Airways. But then it took another almost two years uh, till it happened because he was asking like, what's happening with the band? What, what are the plans? Are you doing this tour? You told me you are doing. And yes, it all happened. And then I sent him uh, a 
demo uh, of the new album and he was like, okay, let's do it. And so it took some time, but it was really worth it. And I, I think it was even better that it took two years because they were better uh, two years later. So I was glad they didn't play immediately after he saw them. It's, uh, if you don't know them, just check them videos. It's uh, quite niche music. It's a uh, shoegaze post rock, some stuff, and such uh, underground alternative music. It's uh, quite uh, popular in some circles, in some musical circles over Europe. So it's quite a surprise for some people, for me as well. And I think another important like point that Tanya mentioned is that you need to be prepared to play the showcases just. Uh, some of them are the only chance, like Eurosonic, you have only one chance to play there. So you need to really focus, like, is this, is this the right moment to play it, or should we wait one more year to apply and play? So uh, I think people should be like careful about their choices, because once you got to play and you don't use the, your chance, it can mean that you never get it back. Or even if you got to play, you make people to come, and the show was it's not the show is not the best that you can give because you need more time maybe to play more shows then uh, people will remember it and maybe they will need m much more time to get back to you for example for me the ills the first time i saw them was seven years ago and i was like no never <laughs> never again <laughs> i remember those times <laughs> yes because they, they just started and it, it wasn't it, they didn't play well together and then after a few years, I gave them another chance and I was totally amazed. And I was like, yes, this is, this is something that you know, Slovakia needs, like the band like them. So, yeah, so you, you need to play first a lot uh, in your rehearsal room, then in your clubs in your town, and then after you really can play, you can, even if you should maybe do some tours around Europe and then maybe sign up for Eurosonic or these important showcases when you are really tight. They, they don't have even a singer, it's uh, instrumental music, I forgot to mention it. And they are celebrating 10 years uh, anniversary this year, so check them out. Go, Go to Bratislava if you're from Austria, they play on 18th, 18th October. And so you are regular uh, into showcase festivals, right? Right? And uh, you are trying to push uh, music from Slovakia somehow. Uh, I want to ask Monika, how is uh, Pohoda Festival helping with uh, with Slovak music playing abroad? Uh, I was thinking about this question because it's quite like there are many ways. First of all, I think that we are lucky to create a brand like Pohoda Festival is now known in the world. So if somebody is playing at a festival, it means something. It's not just like, oh, just a, some small festival, but some, something that is considered to be good, even in, in abroad and, and by other agents and uh, anything. So it's a good reference for the band to play at the festival. So that, 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 that's the first point, just you play, you get a good reference. Maybe you will get more shows or get some shows outside. And then the second thing is that we travel to all these showcases and we are everywhere we travel, we promote the Slovaks somehow. It's not maybe our main goal because we want to get the festival promoted first, but then it naturally goes with it because when you got into touch with people and you talk about Slovakia, it's always like, who are the bands? They're asking about the, about the Slovak acts. And we, we are giving the recommendations. Also, people are asking us, um, writing us email, like who we can recommend. And then next year, at the beginning of uh, January, half of January, Eurosonic is happening, and uh, it will be focused on Slovak and Czech uh, bands, uh, or let's say markets. So, and we were the we were the ones who were asked to to start the promotion in Slovakia because we already get a good uh, connection with Eurosonic. So we we are now some middlemen with Lala. Uh, uh, for Slovakia to, to try to push the bands at Eurosonic. Okay, uh, Eurosonic 2019, focus country, Slovakia and Czech Republic, and we are also focus country on this year. 
as edition of Waves Bratislava. Thank you ladies for now. <laughs> if you have more questions about booking, uh, just ask uh, after our conversation. Uh, I, I will ask uh, guys from Lala, from Slovak Music Export Office, because it's quite a new thing. Um, also the Sharpa Festival, uh, the first year happened only this year, this year. And I want to know how it happened, what was the first start, and what's the story of Slovak Music Export Office? Uh, we started, I think it was uh, two and a half years ago, maybe, yeah, almost three years ago. And it was uh, at a concert in Bratislava where uh, Monika from Pohoda was and uh, Misha Berzniak, who, who just left because he's preparing the, the, the reception now. Mm -hmm. And we were watching and listening to the concerts and we were talking to each other that for a long time there's been... Uh, people have been talking about uh, Slovak music going abroad and how we can support uh, these activities and initiatives. And uh, some people have been already trying to establish, establish something, or, or at least they were they were talking about it. And uh, at this uh, concert, we we told to each other with uh, Monica and Misha, let's just do it. Let's just stop speaking about it, and and let's just really really do something and uh, and uh, like start uh, doing various projects and activities to push uh, the. The Slovak music abroad, so uh, it started from maybe naive uh, and idealistic. Started uh, from the bottom. Started from really, really started from the bottom. We we were three people uh, working in various areas of music. Uh, Monica from Pohoda Festival. Misho is a is a production manager on basically every Slovak festival. You can almost see him, and and I was uh, doing PR. So we thought, let's just connect our knowledge and our contacts, and let, let's try to do something. And and for the first uh, one year, I think we didn't apply, or maybe we tried to apply. We tried to. We, we tried to apply for some funding as well, but really for the for for, for the first year, we had no uh, support. We were actually investing our money. We uh, we started this website that I told you about, where we are creating sort of a directory of. Uh, of contacts and uh, and venues and festivals to make like a, uh, like a comprehensive uh, uh, presentation of Slovak music for the for the for a visitor from abroad if, if, if there's a person coming to the website from abroad, but also we were doing a lot of things in Slovakia because we realized that in order to go abroad, we really need to have a strong setup at home and we need to be well connected. We we need to work on on education. So we do various workshops. We also invite uh, people from abroad to, to come share their experiences with, uh, with uh, Slovak uh, musicians and, and, and Slovak uh, uh, music managers and professionals. And so uh, this was the first year of uh, Lala? This was the, the, the first year we, we also did uh, like a release of, uh, we, we, we connected several Slovak labels to create a compilation of uh, Slovak music, like a sample of, uh, of what the Slovak music can sound like. And that, that I think was kind of the first time when the, when the indie alternative labels connected together and, and created a, a compilation and the proceeds from the compilation then were returned back to the scene in form of, uh, of again, of education or various projects. So it was a way how to fundraise a little bit. So we, we were trying to, to, to do various ways of fundraising. Many times it was our money, uh, but we somehow believed that it, it, may, it makes sense. And uh, then eventually we, we also got support from the Slovak Arts Council and uh, I think it's getting better and better and, and more uh, professional, for also from, from our side. But still, some things we really just have to do on our own. Like, for example, now at the reception, the food and the goulash that you will eat, that was really cooked by us. Uh, or not, not by me, but uh, <laughs> that, would, that would not be edible, maybe. But uh, uh, yeah, it, it's really, it comes from, from, from us. So. And with the compilation, is it sold out already? 
Uh, we got some of the last uh, CDs. And have you got them here? With you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's uh, the best from Slovak music on this compilation, really. Yeah, I, uh, I would uh, be maybe more modest, like uh, because there's <laughs> there's uh, many many uh, areas and many many genres, many artists, and it's not possible to include and integrate everything in one compilation so but we are trying to to like make it as diverse and broad as possible mm -hmm. and then uh, maybe like to to end the story uh, or not end hopefully it's not ending yet but uh, uh, we from the beginning we were talking that it would be nice to have a festival similar to the nature of waves vienna in, in Bratislava, and we had something like that before. It was it was actually a, a collaboration between Waves Vienna and Waves Bratislava, and Misho and I both worked for the festival as well. Uh, so we we gained a lot of experience from there, and we we also gained positive experience in terms of how to do things and maybe also how not to do things. And so we started uh, a new new brand new festival called Sharp, which is in April. In, uh, in Bratislava and, and Tanya is the head of conference. So we, we are a tiny scene, so everyone is working together and we are trying to help each other out. And uh, I think the first year of Sharpa Festival was quite successful, wasn't it? I, th I think it was. Uh, there, there has been good feedback from um, from professionals, from artists, uh, they liked how we treated them. I think uh, there was quite many people attending, so the artists felt good. From they, they had some good feedback from the audience. There were uh, there was a good bunch of uh, music professionals from abroad, and now when we were at at uh, Reeperbahn at in Hamburg, we met some people who weren't at the festival, but they were telling us, oh, we heard great things about the festival, so that's uh, Yeah, and nice. the, venue that's is, nice. the venue is lovely as well. So The venue is, uh, is a former chemi chemistry high school, uh, which is a huge building, uh, sort of on the periphery of, it's, it's not central, it's not central, but in, it's not in, in the center of Bratislava, it's a former chemistry school, uh, which has not been used for I don't know how long, and then it was transformed into a cultural hub. So basically, the, the classrooms are turned into studios for for artists, for visual artists, musicians, architects, designers, and so on. So we also used some of the studios for for the venues, and we had the outdoor stage, and and everything was compact in in one place, sort of similar, but <laughs> somehow comparable to some, somehow comparable to 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 Waves Vienna, uh, smaller, it's smaller. So and next year there will, there will be a second year of uh, Sharpa Festival, right? Yes, there will be. Uh, 26th and 27th April. Mm -hmm. Alex, you've uh, mentioned the support from Slovak Arts Council for uh, Lala Slovak Music Export Office, and we have a Robert here from from Slovak. No. And how are this? Uh, he's responsible for musical affairs in Slovak Arts Council, right? <coughs> how are you? Uh, what do you think about such activities as uh, Slovak Music Export Office and Sharpa Festival? How do you support in them? Uh, okay, uh, since our institution is uh, could be only as good as the project we support, uh, because uh, we uh, focus only on uh, support uh, of. Uh, projects in culture and uh, art. Um, uh, we are happy that uh, uh, if uh, the projects are uh, successful uh, and perspective and uh, projects of uh, Lala Music Export and Sharp Festival are among these uh, successful projects. Um, uh, so uh, um, How are you supporting it? Uh, Lava applied this year uh, to our new scheme of support, uh, which is uh, focused on whole year support. And uh, their project was uh, only among uh, the six uh, projects which uh, get the funding. 
and uh, they get uh, uh, they get the full support uh, which they need it. Uh, not need it, but uh, uh, which they applied for. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> we uh, need it. Not the goulash. Uh, um, um, in some countries, uh, the export office is a public institution, uh, which is uh, directly funded uh, by uh, state budget uh, or uh, the government. Um, this is not our case in Slovakia, so uh, we must do it uh, the harder way. They must do it the harder way. Uh, they must apply uh, for grants, for support, um, and um, I think uh, they do it uh, um, great. Robert, more which other activities did you support it from Slovak Arts Council I, in terms of music? Uh, yeah, uh, we focus not only on music, uh, but uh, all kind of uh, cultural activities, uh, except for the film, uh, which has a separate fund, um, literature, visual arts, uh, performing arts, and as for the music, uh, we support uh, um, composition by uh, scholarships, uh, uh, records, uh, distribution, promotion of the uh, records and also um, um, festivals and concerts and also the presentation of Slovak music uh, abroad. Uh, we have regular calls uh, uh, once a year um, and uh, um, we also have some extra calls. Uh, now it's open uh, extra call for um, uh, for the presentation of uh, Slovak bands uh, on Eurosong. Okay, thank you. Another big, a big question for us is to how to uh, start to cooperate with our uh, foreign countries, uh, our con uh, our neighboring countries. We were thinking about Austria since we are in Vienna. Are there uh, are here any people from Austria here? Yeah. No, not many. Organize, just organize it, but uh, we, we don't think we have such a good cooperation with our neighboring countries with such music. Uh, we were thinking about Austria. Uh, do you have any experiences, girls, with uh, booking bands uh, from Austria and Slovakia? Yes, we had a few at, uh, at the festival already in these past years. I can't name any, but <laughs> Electro Gucci. Electro Gucci. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Resistors played here last year at Vegas and we booked them for the festival. Do you think we have a good cooperation with Austria? I think it can be better always. You know, we have really good cooperation, I think, with Czech Republic. The, the scenes are nat somehow naturally connected because we were a federation before. But um, Austria is even closer, like with Vienna. 60 kilometers or how many from Bratislava, I think this could, this could be used better with the, the cooperation. And Tanya, do you have uh, some experience with uh, working with uh, Austrian bands? Uh, I think we only had one Austrian band uh, playing in Bratislava at the Real Something series. It was actually a band called Tumido, which is not really well in, very known in Austria, but uh, they share the, the drummer, uh, of Tumido is the drummer of Electro Guzzi, but this Tumido band is like a secret project of uh, various musicians from Austria where they like hi they hide with this project, it's just for their, for their pleasure. It's interesting because they play in more known bands, but they have this project. So this, this band we had in Bratislava and they were great. And um, What about other countries, our neighboring countries? Uh, yeah, we had a lot of bands from Czech Republic, uh, from Hungary, I don't know if we had somebody, and from Poland, I'm not sure at the moment. But yeah, we, 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 are, yeah, we are meeting and discussing at the conferences also with the uh, guys from Poland and uh, the guys from Hungary. I recently met a girl from Ukraine and we were talking about something, that it was just a rap band, so didn't get really back to it, but maybe there will be some cooperation. And I just said, I just wanted to say, say that uh, our bands uh, played in Austria, I mean, 
several times, uh, not just in Vienna, but also in uh, Graz, Linz, uh, mm, uh, I forget now. <laughs> But yeah, they did, and uh, uh, at Ripperbahn I finally met uh, with the Numami, which is uh, an Austrian label. And we've been emailing uh, like for maybe three or four years or already, and we haven't met in person, so finally we met. And we they all, all already booked some of my bands to Graz, and they just told me they moved to Vienna, so we were thinking about a stronger cooperation with them, so I hope it happens. So how to make a and, and, and they have great bands at the Numavi label. I really like the bands, mm -hmm. the Austrian bands that are on the label. Okay, so start the connection between countries in a small way, in a small way. Well, uh, the last question for now, uh, it's uh, uh, Michal, Michal, the head and the founder of Pohoda Festival, he used to say that uh, Slovakian bands are so good, so good, but they don't have such confidence in uh, international competition. And how our bands can get such confidence in this uh, international area? What do you think? I think Lala is helping a lot. No, because because sometimes it's not about just having confidence on stage. I think the bands have the confidence on stage, but to go outside, to to have to, to do the step, to just think outside of Slovakia. And I think it's, it's important that somebody is telling them the, the successful stories maybe from abroad, but also some of the Slovak fans that already made it, somehow, at least. So I think this is, uh, this is really important. And maybe we are still waiting for some big su success story. Somebody who will be, like we say always, like Georg Sugarcubes Sh from Iceland. That somebody, okay, we can do it the same as they did. And we still don't have that big name. So you think one big name uh, should uh, push things forward for other bands? I think it will help because it will be inspirational and people will think out of the box. So it's a question not only for bands but uh, also for managers and promoters. Yeah. What do you think, Alex? Uh, I, I liked what uh, Tanya once said in an interview that uh, the, S the Slovak artists or Slovak bands, if they want to, or if they want to achieve something abroad, they really have to want to do it. Do I uh, translate it right? Like you, they really need, like have have to have the desire to to go because not everyone, maybe maybe it's not for for everyone to uh, to try to break the borders, and uh, they need to confront or be confronted with. Uh, the competition from abroad, and if they see that uh, uh, that they are not definitely not not worse, that there is that they are comparable, and, and there are good feedbacks, I think that it will slowly come. Like it, it's really a, it cannot just uh, break in uh, in uh, in, a, in a short period of time. It's really hard work, as uh, as Tana said. Sometimes it takes. Uh, three or four years of only emailing until you actually meet uh, someone in person, and it's uh, it's a mission. So I, I think uh, well, Slovakia is slowly slowly getting there, and uh, things like this, uh, we, we, things like these, which are happening here at Waves Vienna, are certainly helping uh, to get the Slovak music scene uh, on the map. And let's see what happens after Eurosonic. Yeah, and we need to get uh, backing for the bands as well because we have good bands but mo most of them don't have their managers they don't have their agents they don't have these people who can who can support them on those tours and can help them out usually Slovak bands are doing most of the stuff by themselves and it's it's really hard work then and if somebody, something is not going as they wished then they usually come back to Slovakia to the point it when, whereas where they have the middleman, it can help to cope with it. Or a middle woman. Middle woman, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, guys, do you have any uh, personal favorites or some uh, recommendations of uh, Slovakian bands who can make it, who are so good, who are such good uh, to break the borders and who are working hard to, to make it? Or we can see see them uh, at this festival or at Eurosonic. Uh, Definitely go. Uh, well, not 
go check out all of the bands uh, from Slovakia who are still on the schedule. But uh, this festival will be clo will be closing with a with a performance of Isa Mazing, which is a producer uh, from from Bratislava and really uh, extremely talented. Classically trained, he's playing cello, but now he's working mostly with uh, electronic music. But really, as you said, the deconstructed club music. Deconstructed club music. It's really original. It's really something that uh, that strikes uh, interest also from people from abroad. That when they hear it, they say like, "Oh, this is really something that uh, this is real something that uh, we have not have not heard it before." The, the it's a world sound, I don't know how to say it, but uh, com comparable, competitive. Yes. Okay, that's uh, now, now for questions. Do you have any questions or comments for my guests here? Yes, what is, uh, sorry, I'm Fabrice from, uh, from Paris in France. Uh, what is the impact of the the wages and the money that people are making in, in, in Slovakia and in Czechia regarding the rest of Europe. I think there is a big gap when a band, uh, an Austrian band is wishing to play in Slovakia, maybe they are asking for such a big amount of money compared to what people can afford to pay the tickets. While you were talking, I was checking on your website the price of the tickets and I see that many of the events are at a lower price. So what is the impact when you are thinking about having a band from Western Europe playing in your festival, playing in Slovakia, and is it a tough subject to talk, to talk with management and uh, companies? Good question. That's a good question, and yeah, it is like that. It's for us. We need to pay international prices uh, to the bands, but also to the suppliers for the festival. So who are building the stages and so on? But then we are getting the money from the tickets from Slovak, mostly Slovak audiences. So we are keeping it uh, quite low, uh, quite low, yeah. If we wanted to pay the whole festival, the, the price for the uh, tickets will have to be twice as, as, as it is now. Now it's 99 euro. It just changed, it was 89 till two days ago. And now it's 99 for the three day festival. But still we are, managing to do it. We know how big our budget budget is and also I think with some bands we are able to get a bit lower prices than the Western um, market that they, they will expect of the Western market. Because we are a different market we they and they understand it. If we have a good connection with the management and they understand it then it's possible to get it. But it's always a big game. It's from band to band. We, we were uh, recent, recently uh, booked a band called uh, Low Roar, uh, or an artist Low Roar for Bratislava. And I remember when we sent the costing to the agent from UK, uh, she said, oh, the tickets, they are extremely low. Like, can you, like low price, can you raise the price? And we, we explained to her if we raise the price, like we, we can do it, but then, uh, there's a risk that uh, people won't come. Like there's a obviously the price levels and, and, and the wages in Slovakia are rising, but yeah, you can you have to respect that in right. some I, way. I really and think I really think that with the fact that Live Nation is now 25 percent of the English market, Live Nation, AEG, and two other companies in France are just swallowing festivals. Mm -hmm. uh, bands like Imagine Dragons are 600,000 euros for a show. So if we don't go to the completely opposite direction, we're all gonna lose this business. So fact is, I, I'm sure that there are very interesting uh, sponsors, like people who wants to make sustainable economy, blah, blah, wishing to bring music as a way to gather people to think a very, very different way of, of living music and living uh, life, because we all know we go in another world, and music is the only language people are talking. So I think, your countries are probably one of the leading uh, part of Europe to explain to people that it's time is finished for a huge amount of money. We are explaining this. Uh, sometimes they just say, okay, we will just skip Slovakia. Not, not sometimes, but it, it happens quite often. Right? Like bands, what you mentioned, imagine dragons. 
I kind of. I think they played. They, they really played Slovakia. Slovakia. Yeah, I think yeah. I really? Think oh, okay. Slovakia. Okay. I, wa I wanted to say I cannot imagine playing them in Slovakia, and they played. Yes, it's, it's, it's <laughs> possible. All right. And I, then we just have to be positive. Okay. <laughs> Okay, any more uh, last question? No? Just then just grab grab us somewhere and go to Slovak reception. Twelve forty five at twelve forty five at Vuk Project Room. Come uh, eat some good food. There there is there will be uh, uh, a concert as well of Papillon in, in an acoustic version and Maybe we will organize some some competition for tickets for Sharp Festival as, as well. We don't know how exactly we will organize that, but maybe. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for discussions and have fun.